Hey, what's up my chemistry people? It is Mr. Boylan back for a really exciting video today. We are going to name ionic compounds containing main group or transition metals using International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry, IUPAC nomenclature rules. As always, let's take a moment to break it down a little bit. First thing we're gonna do is name ionic compounds from its formula and then we're gonna write the formulas given its name. Okay, so first let's recognize that you can have monatomic ions, which are charged atoms that form from a single UNO atom. Monatomic. Monatomic cations, or those positive ions, are named simply by the element's name followed by the word ion. So, for example, let's take a look at lithium. How do we know the type of ion that it will form? Well, there's a nifty pattern that forms on the periodic table that you can use to easily help you determine the type of ion that will form. Lithium, for example, is in group one and will form the one plus ion. Essentially, it's gonna lose its single valence electron. Boom, lithium ion. We also have, for example, magnesium. Magnesium is in group two and following the pattern that forms on the periodic table, we would expect to form an ion with a two plus charge. This is because magnesium is gonna lose not one, but it's two valence electrons, forming the magnesium two plus ion. Monatomic anions, on the other hand, are named by changing the ending of the element's name to IDE followed by the word ion. So let's take a look at the element nitrogen. A neutral atom of nitrogen has five valence electrons. Once again, there's this nifty pattern that you can use to help you identify simply by looking at the periodic table, but recognize that nitrogen is gonna gain three electrons to complete its valence level. Those three negative electrons are gonna give the nitrogen atom an overall charge of three minus. And we call this the nitride ion. Let's take a look at chlorine. Again, take a look at the pattern that forms on the periodic table or recognize that chlorine has seven valence electrons. And to complete that valence level, it needs to gain a single electron and will therefore form the ion with a charge of minus one. Now, it's important to recognize that your transition metals can form more than one ion. We're gonna use what's called the stock system, which uses a Roman numeral to indicate an ion's charge. For our class, most transition metals tin and lead will require a Roman numeral when they form ions. Some big exceptions that you need to be aware of are silver, cadmium, and zinc. So as you look at your periodic table, recognize that those elements that I'm highlighting in yellow are ones that typically form more than one ion. The ones highlighted in red do not, and consequently will not need a Roman numeral. So as you take a look at your notes, got a quick periodic table there that separates the main group elements from the transition metals. And recognize that those main group elements typically will only form one type of ion and therefore do not need a Roman numeral. However, your transition metals, many of them will form multiple ions and therefore do require the use of a Roman numeral to indicate which specific ion you have formed. Now, for naming and writing compounds, we're gonna look at compounds that are composed of two different ions, a cation and an anion. And these are known as binary ionic compounds. Important to recognize that despite being made of ions, the overall charge of the compound is neutral. So, let's take a quick look at the ionic compound that's gonna form between calcium and fluorine. Recognize that your calcium atom is gonna lose its electrons and fluorine is gonna gain electrons. Calcium is going to lose its two valence electrons to form the plus two ion. Each atom of fluorine is going to gain one electron to form the one minus ion. Those opposite charges are going to form an attractive force or bond between the ions. It's important to recognize that the ratio in this compound is one calcium ion to two fluoride ions because overall we want a charge of zero. Now, how do we write the formulas for these ionic compounds? It's a step-by-step -step process. First thing we're gonna do is write the symbols of the ions side by side. Always write your cation first. Positive ion, typically your metal. Two, cross over the charges by using the numerical value of each ion's charge as the subscript for the other ion. Step three, check the subscripts and divide them by their largest common factor to give the smallest possible whole number ratio of ions. You're gonna write your final formula without charges. That is gonna represent one formula unit 
of the ionic compound. Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Magnesium chloride. Step one, write the ions side by side, cation first. We've got the magnesium two plus ion and the chloride one minus ion. Again, there is a pattern that forms on the periodic table to help you recognize the charges that those ions are gonna form. Step two, draw arrows that cross each other. Crisscross, boom. We're gonna write the number of the charge at the end of the arrows. So notice I'm taking just the number, not the plus and minus sign. We're gonna erase the charges, reduce our subscripts if necessary, and erase any subscript of one. It's important to recognize a subscript of one understood without writing it down. So our final formula here, MgCl2. What this tells me is I have one magnesium ion, two chloride ions to make an overall neutral formula unit of magnesium chloride. Let's take a look at another example. First step, write the ions side by side. Magnesium two plus, oxide two minus. Step two, draw arrows that crisscross. Boom. Step three, write the number of the charge at the end of the arrow. Again, I'm just taking the numerical value, not the positive and minus sign. I'm gonna erase the charges, reduce the subscripts if necessary, and erase any subscript of one. As I look at this example, recognize that my subscripts can be reduced. Instead of two to two, I can simply write it as one to one. So my final formula here is MgO. I just need a single magnesium ion and a single oxide ion to reach an overall neutral charge for my formula unit. Okay, let's talk about doing the reverse. What if we're given a formula and we want the name? First, simply write the name of the cation. Second, write the name of the anion. Don't forget your ending has changed to IDE. For example, NaCl. First, we're gonna write the name of the cation. Boom, Na is my cation, its name is sodium. Second, we're gonna write the name of the anion. The anion in this case is chlorine, but don't forget, change that ending of the nonmetal to IDE. So we have sodium chloride, and that's the final name for my compound. You want another example? Sure. First step, write the name of the cation. In this case, our cation is lithium. Step two, write the name of the anion. In this case, our anion is nitrogen. Step three, don't forget, change the ending of that nonmetal anion to IDE. So my final compound name here, lithium nitride. Boom, lithium nitride. Let's take a look now at an example that uses a transition metal, iron Roman numeral three chloride. We're gonna write the ions side by side. I don't have to look at my periodic table here. In the name, it tells me that the charge of the iron ion is positive three. Chloride is gonna be one minus. Next step, crisscross those charges. Again, we're gonna write just the numerical value. We're not gonna include the plus or minus sign. That's gonna indicate the number of each of those ions I have. These are charges, any subscripts of one, reduce if necessary. In this case, our final compound formula is gonna be FeCl3. I need one of those iron three ions, three of the chloride ions to make an overall neutral compound. Boom, my formula unit for iron three chloride. All right, in our last example here, we're gonna look at another transition metal, but this time we're gonna write the names. As previously, we're gonna start by writing the name of the cation. The name of my cation, however, is copper two. Now, how do I know that I need to include the Roman numeral? You wanna recall that most transition metals, including copper, can form multiple ions. So anytime you've got one of those transition metals highlighted here in yellow, make sure that you include a Roman numeral with its name. Next step, write the name of the anion, in this case, chlorine. But finally, don't forget to change the ending of that anion to IDE. Copper two, chloride. Boom, there's my name that represents this ionic compound. All right, and that's it for today's video. Have a fantastic day.